sailors know themselves to be at the mercy of the sea and of the wind and of those elemental forces combined in the form of waves and storms. Against all that, they have only their boats and their skill. Maybe that's one of the reasons why sailors sail, to test themselves snug in a little boat against the restless power of the sea and the wind. That would be test enough for most of us. But one sailor devised a tougher test for himself. He's the man with whom Terence Smith shipped out recently. The freedom, the sense of harmony, because you're suspended between the water and the wind and an inanimate object, a boat, which is plastic and metal and rope, turns into something that's living and that talks to you through your feet and your hands and your ears. You know, like Eddie, like the bumper strip says, I'd rather be sailing. For Jim Dixon, sailing is more than recreation. It's a liberation from the blindness that has afflicted him from the age of seven. To demonstrate that the disabled are just differently able, he set off two years ago to sail single-handedly across the Atlantic. Five days into his planned month-long journey, disaster struck. His satellite navigation system failed, then his autopilot. Uh, my first reaction was I was so angry I started to take the sat-nav out of its housing. I was going to throw it overboard. It was just, just rage. Now, you're looking uh, at other boats as well. Uh... Now Dixon is preparing to try again. His determination and independence flow from the way his family responded to his childhood blindness. You know, I'd come home crying. They wouldn't let me play baseball. And my dad sat me down and said, well, you can't play baseball. You know, what about being a lineman in the football league? There's something else you can do. And you can either sit at home and feel sorry for yourself, or you can go out and have fun. Jiminy. That's incredible. Dixon suffers from retinitis pigmentosa a hereditary disease that robs the sight of one in every 4,000 Americans. It's a gradual dimming of the visual screen. It's like an old black and white TV set. The picture gets fainter and fainter until you can't see anything. In laboratory animals, they can stop that process. Science needs the opportunity to find out, can that knowledge be applied to humans? To help raise funds for that research, Dixon combined his twin passions, a sailing regatta that would raise money for the Baltimore-based Retinitis Pigmentosa Foundation. I know able-bodied people need education. The able-bodied need to know that the disabled, with a slight amount of accommodation, can do whatever. Are there signs of chafe on the sail there? No. We went sailing with Jim Dixon aboard a Condor 40, a state-of-the-art trimaran he is considering using for his next solo transatlantic attempt. <clears throat> Tells me how much flex, flex there is in the upper part of the mast. There's a little bit of flex as we move as we're moving but there's not a whole lot the notion of sailing the atlantic blind is incomprehensible to some foolhardy to others dixon says he can do it with some special equipment he'll install in his new boat like a talking computer that provides an audio readout of his location that and lots of practice in sailing, one of the ways that a sailor, a sighted sailor, knows that he's 
sailing properly, right in the groove, as it's called, is that he looks at the forward telltales, usually on the jib. Mm -hmm. And if they're streaming back, he's in the groove. Mm -hmm. You can't see that. Mm -hmm. So how do you know when you've got the boat right? Well, high-tech way, the talking computer will tell me the wind angle and boat speed. And when you know your, when, I, when you know the boat, it, the wind's angle, the wind speed, you know you're in the groove when the boat speed is doing what it's supposed to. With practice, you can do it just by feel. You, you can feel it on the tiller. You can hear the way the boat sounds. The attraction of this new boat for Dixon is that it is stable, virtually unsinkable, and compared to the mono hull he used last time, incredibly fast. A boat like this gets me across quicker, so it makes the window for potential disasters smaller. Some critics dismiss Dixon's transatlantic attempts as grandstanding, a mere stunt. I think we have lots of rights as Americans, but the one that's not mentioned that is at the core of our society is the right to risk. We admire the person who sells and hawks everything to build a business. We admire the astronaut. We glorify the ball player who puts his body or her body on line. Except if you're disabled, then you're not supposed to exercise that right. Uh, for a transatlantic passage, I think he's mentally and physically equipped far better than most. The trimaran builder, Phil Herting, became convinced of Jim Dixon's ability to make the trip after he sailed with him. He hears things and feels things we might we might feel, but we don't perceive, and uh, uh, he's amazing. Do I hear a boat upwind of us? How Very about? Far away, no problem. Okay. Tell me this: you're you're determined to try it again? Yes. Why? Um because I said I was gonna do it, because there's, it's like being in love. You know, you, you get something in your head and in your gut and you just, I just can't get it out of my mind. 